Hey, what's up, guys? Christian Brindle here, and we are back with another episode of the series that Kathy Klein is so um, graciously willing to do with me on the steps of evolution through your insurance agent Medicare agency journey. We've done several of these videos so far, lots of great content, lots of great information. We are recording this just on the outskirts, basically, of AEP ending, and you know, I think both of us are probably pretty tired, pretty exhausted, but we still got enough in the tank to bring you guys some value. Kathy, how are you today? Welcome back. Thank you so much. And yes, I have to tell you, this is probably the toughest AEP I've ever had to go through. And that includes when I was brand new. This was just a wild ride. Yes. And for the viewers and listeners, I'm sure you probably had the same experience we did. Oh, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. It was definitely as I was as we were talking about, you know, kind of leading up to this, I was like, it's it was a one to remember, you know, one for the books. That's for sure. Kathy, where do let's let's pick up where we left off on last on the last episode in terms of these stages that you've developed. Talk about what's our next stage that we're diving into right now. Sure. So before I do that, let me just recap what the stages are, just for in case this is the viewer's first time. We've got stage one, which is pre-licensing. That's when you're really brand new. Stage two is contracting an AHIP or NABIB, if you're doing that. Did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> as, as well as I would have. <laughs> I'm old school. I still want to say the old word. Um, stage three is getting started. That's your first 10 apps. Stage four is getting going. That's under 100 apps or clients, I should say. Stage five, the hardest stage, in my opinion, is the hustle. That's when you have at least 100 clients, but you haven't really built systems yet. And then we've got stage six, which is generally 300 and more clients. And that's when you're building, tweaking, and maintaining your systems. Stage seven is acquiring and managing a sales team. Sometimes people will do stage seven before they build their systems. Stage eight, preparing for transition or sale. And stage nine is transitioning or retiring. So that's that's where we're at. So today, yes, stage six, and that's the stage that I'll probably be in maybe the rest of my life. We'll We'll see. And I would say that I'm pretty good at building systems. But during this last AEP, I realized I needed to build some additional systems too. So yeah, that's where we're at, Christian. Yeah. Building systems. So let's dive into this, the building systems, you know, kind of stage. What would you say to somebody that maybe is just exiting out of stage five, going into stage six, where do they start with building systems? What does that look like? Well, I would hope that they already have a CRM. I I don't even know Hopefully. how <laughs> you can do this business without some way of tracking your clients. And I don't mean the CRM that your upline is giving you. I don't mean, you know, when I first started in this business, I was already an established financial advisor. So I already had systems in place. And when I found out there were agents that I don't know how they were tracking their clients, well, they're like, well, I can I can go on Humana and pull up all my clients, or I can go on United Healthcare, or I can go wherever. And I'm like, yeah, but what if they all of a sudden decide they don't like you anymore? That then how are you going to track your client? I mean, even an Excel spreadsheet is better than nothing, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think I think it's a great point because. You know, like you said, on both sides of that spectrum, whether you're relying on the carrier sites or whether you're relying on a CRM provided from your upline, your upline, let's say one day you want to leave, like maybe, 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 maybe the relationship's not so good anymore and you want to leave. Well, then they lock, they lock you out. Number one. And number two, they have all of your data at your, their disposal. And, you know, they, it's their system. They control it. They control everything that goes into it. And on the carrier side, I mean, think about like a, a United Healthcare, right? They didn't allow agents to see their book of business in the system until pretty recently, actually. Last couple Is of years. Is that true? Yeah. I, yeah. It, I guess I didn't know that because 
we've always had a CRM. Yeah. So if you couldn't go in and see who your clients were. The only way was if you check the commission statements to see who was on there. But like now, if you go into Jarvis, you can see your book of business, your active book of business. But that was not a thing a couple of years oh back. And and who's to say they didn't wouldn't you know, not not to pick on them specifically, but who's to say maybe like they don't undo that one day. You know, they always have that control. So I I I say all that to say I couldn't agree with you more. I think you are so well off to have a CRM that you control. You have the power onto it. No one can have access to it but you. It's it's your system and it's it's worth the investment. I think a lot of agents kind of, you know, they just get so bogged down in, oh, I don't want to spend money on this if I get it for free over here. But like it's a business expense that you need to spend. It's worth it. To me, it's baseline. Yes. Like that is the bare minimum that you need is a way to not only track who your clients are, but the conversations you've said with them, with them. So I think it was two years into the business, I got a complaint. My only complaint I've ever gotten, by the way, which is amazing because <laughs> most agents have at least a few complaints. Mm-hmm. But all I did was I I went to my CRM, I printed out all the notes, and I sent it to the carrier. And that's that's all I did. I said, okay, here's proof of the conversations. Here's proof of what we did. Because I notate and my assistant notates after we speak to a client or, you know, and all of our emails are stored in there. Everything is stored in the CRM. And because it's, I'm still using my financial planner CRM, which I would like to change to get a CRM that is specific to Medicare, especially now. Um, So we'll talk about that in a second, because that's part of systems. But um, the baseline is you want to know what you've said to the client and what they've said to you. And you want to be able to track that, not just for compliance reasons, but just so that when you're talking to the client, Oh, we talked about you were going to Hawaii. So but how did that go? I mean, just so that you can have conversations with your clients, it really increases your referrals if they think that you know who they are when you call them. And you should know who they are, but sometimes it takes a little a little help to jog your memory. And that's what these notes are about. So, yeah. so definitely baseline CRM. And a way to keep in contact with your clients because even before all of these CRMs started doing it, we were sending out a newsletter. We were, I used to, when I was a financial advisor, you are going to laugh because I didn't, you know, I had at one time I had 2000 clients. They weren't financial planning clients, but I sold 403Bs, which is kind of like a 401k for uh, people who work for nonprofits. And I had over 2000, about 2,500 clients. When I would go on vacation or when I would go on company sponsored trips, I would bring us, I would go online. I would order a stack of postcards for wherever I was going and I would have them mailed to me 500 or whatever. And then when I got to the location I would sign my name before I went, but when I got to the location, I would start putting little personalized things on that said, hey, I'm, let's say I was on a company trip for financial planning. Hey, I'm in Hilton Head learning about how to serve you better. Love and kisses, Kathy. And I would put a stamp on it. I would mail it from wherever I was. I don't do that now because the I'm not making three to $5,000 commission in my current. So I can't really afford to send, I can't afford to do all the things that I did then. But the the point is keep in contact with your clients. And so now we send out birthday cards and yes, I hand sign them. I used to send them out through send out cards. But what I noticed is that when I personally sign the card. And when I actually drop a physical business card in that card, I get more referrals. You know, I I don't know why I think it's that physical business card. They like to keep it and they give it away. Um, I was getting referrals before, but now that I don't use send out cards anymore, I actually uh, get more referrals, uh, a higher percentage. 
So stay in contact with your clients. You have to have a system to do that. And if you don't have a system, you know, it, it could just be send a send a card out on Valentine's Day. You know, it doesn't have to be Christmas cards. I don't even send Christmas cards, Christian. I send Thanksgiving cards because I don't want my Christmas cards to get lost with everybody else's. Now that stamps are what is what are stamps now? Seventy cents, yeah. sixty eight cents, yeah, it, something like that. Um, I mean, it's not that cheap anymore to send no. mail, and I don't want my mail to get lost. So I send it out um, different times of the year. I you, you know, I might send a Valentine's Day card. I might send a Thanksgiving card. Definitely send a birthday card. You'd be surprised at how many people don't get birthday cards, and they're like. They're so thankful that you sent them a card. <laughs> Sometimes I'm embarrassed when they call me and they thank me. I'm like, well, it was just a card, you know. Um, but those aren't the systems. Those are baseline things. There are other systems that I feel that every insurance agent should have. And you have a lot of these systems. One is you have to have a way for your clients to make an appointment where you don't have to be involved. You know, you, if you don't have an assistant, and I'm a b- big believer in at the minimum, get a VA for $4 an hour or whatever in the Philippines for a couple of hours a week, at the very, very minimum, um, y- you need to have like a, a, I use book like a boss. It's it's a more expensive appointment setting service, but I like it because I can separate out my podcast and my, the drug plan renewals and the uh, Medicare advantage versus Medicare supplement versus turning 65. I have different types of appointments that people can schedule. And then that appointment type gets different emails. So the turning 65 appointment type new to Medicare gets different emails than the, I want to switch from one Medicare Advantage plan to a different one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why I use the more expensive, but there are, you know, Calendly, I think is $15, $20 a month. I don't, I don't know, but there are cheaper calendar appointment setting. I think Everybody should have one. And people are like, yeah, but I don't know what my schedule's going to be. Or I I want, I need to take my kid home from school on Thursdays at three o'clock. Put that in your calendar. You know, put put these things in your calendar and give yourself some white space where no appointments are made. Schedule in the date with your wife. Schedule in the daddy date dinner dance that you're going to schedule these things in. It's really easy to have a Google calendar these days. And almost all of these appointment scheduling systems, you know, they connect. So you have one, right? How long have you been using a calendar system? Many years. So we have, you know, we we have the the paid version of Calendly. And so our our my calendar system is very, very much, you know, kind of like you described, it's very disciplined. It's amazing how often I'll talk to an agent, whether it be an agent that's with us or an agent that's, you know, coming to us for consulting that are, I believe, in the process of this stage transition that we're talking about. And they will have such a hard time keeping on track of everything as their business is growing, they're feeling overwhelmed. And oftentimes this right here that we're talking about is a big, big culprit as to why, you know, I think just like you said, you know, I think it's imperative to, for me, I live by my calendar. So every single thing I do is in my calendar, you know, from my morning routine, like, you know, to, you know, times of the day where I, block out to check emails and everything I do, you know, it's, it's a personal thing in my personal life, everything goes in my calendar and my day is basically ran by my calendar. And that's how I stay on top of things. It's how I, I remember everything, you know, and trust me, I don't remember a majority of things going on in my business at any given time. 
The only way I can keep it all straight is my calendar keeps it all straight. It's very organized. It's very disciplined. And, you know, I think a combination of people setting appointments for me when something needs to get scheduled, I I don't, I rarely, if ever do it myself, somebody in our organization helps me with it. And then of course we use Calendly, you know, for the, the reminders and the scheduling and it going in the calendar. So I think that is, is such a huge thing, I think, because it's an efficiency thing. Without it, you're going to kind of be all over the place and you're not going to be able to be efficient and get things done in a timely manner. Right, right. And one of the things that I do that I don't think Christian does, um, I, I give my clients access to my calendar. They can go in and they can just schedule themselves in for their own appointment. Um, the only time that I have to approve it is if they use the other a calendar type. So I use other for things that are non-related, like, like this appointment would have been in the other category had Christian scheduled it with me. I think we scheduled, I don't, I don't remember how we scheduled it, but I don't think you used my calendar. I think I got on your calendar. Something like but, that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but I have an other appointment type. Usually it's for vendors. So for example, if I wanted to schedule, let's say a vendor, let's say Humana or Aetna or somebody wants to talk to me, I'll send them the other appointment schedule type so that they're not getting the emails about, I need your scope of appointment. I need, you know, I need this because I don't need a scope of appointment to talk to a vendor, right? So I have that other appointment type and then I have to approve that. But all the other ones are just automatically approved with the exception of prescription drugs. So I don't have the prescription drug type appointment type is not visible to everybody. Uh, that is a private, <laughs> that's a private calendar type um, because I I don't want to take prescription drug plans unless it's an existing client. We'll talk about that maybe in another show, why I decided and maybe maybe I'll have to start again and call consider them leads, which is what I used to do. I used to take the drug plans and I considered them to be leads. But this year I decided I wasn't going to do that. Um, but yes, yeah, so other types of systems in addition to the calendar would be how do you train your staff? How do you hire staff? So I have a whole system the whole online system for hiring. Last time I hired a VA, I got, I don't know, I I can't remember how many apps. It was maybe maybe 800, 800 people applied or something like that. And my system for hiring a VA was first they had to apply and they had to apply a certain way online. And then they had to go through an online pre-hire or like online, what do you call it? Interview. And so the first one was they had to complete a task. And then the second one was they had to do something on video. They had to explain something. Anyway, I had like five or six things that they had to do online. And then I went through all of the the people that made it through. I wound up looking at three of them. I only I only interviewed face to face, not not in person, obviously. Um but I only actually talked to three people because I had the system down. I thought about, well, how do I want to do that? Now for the viewer, I have hired a lot of VAs. This wasn't the first VA. If it was my very first VA, I wouldn't have known what the system was, right? Sometimes you have to go through it to create the system. But the way that I look at it, I don't want to do things more than once. One of the systems that I have, I have a program called Type Desk. Have you heard of it? No, I can't say I have. There are other programs like it. You might be using something similar. I have a whole bunch of responses. When somebody asks me a question on either, um, but let's say there's a question. Oh, let's say somebody emails me and says, I'm turning 65 and I, I, I need an appointment. I have a response that I have already created and it says, great, 
here's my checklist. Here's a video that I want you to watch. And here's an article I want you to read if you're currently working and you have insurance. And so those are like the three things that I always used to have to type out. And I'm like, why am I typing this out over and over again? And so I used to save it to like a Word doc. And and now I just use this program called Type Desk. I hit Control C and then I click T65 and boom, the thing pops up. So that's a system, right? Yeah, absolutely. So- absolutely. And and we, yeah, I, I think that's great. I think that's great advice because I think a lot of agents end up doing a lot of repetitive mundane tasks every day and they don't even realize it. Um, we do something similar um, and we we have pre, pre-responses pre for pretty much everybody in the organization now, you know, so like great. Emma is a great example in my, in, in, in our contracting department. So Emma has pre, you know, she, she gets a lot of similar questions all the time, right? Like I need to move my United healthcare contract or my Humana contract. How do I do that? Well, there's a process, right? For every carrier that's different. Um, and so those responses are predetermined, you know, that we've already kind of went through that and it saves a bunch of time for sure. And same goes for clients. And I, I think finding ways to eliminate those repetitive mundane tasks and have it be relatively automatic is super, super valuable and a game changer in somebody's business. Absolutely. I mean, why are you typing that out over and over again? Yeah. And when you're typing it out over and over again, guess what? You're probably going to forget something. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) I, I think that's a great point because like, I've always said, if I explain something in a video, let's say, because we we do we do also do a lot of videos where you know if we if I've explained something, we'll put it on a video, we'll put it on YouTube for agents. We've multiple YouTube channels, and so one for clients, one for agents, things like that. And so I told somebody, you know, somebody hit me up the other day and they asked me a question that I get asked. I've been asked a million and one times. I sent them a video. Yes, and, and it was and it you was a, should, and 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 it's it's constant. My staff do the same things. They're like, Christian made a video explaining this. Here it is. And this person comes back and they're like, well, this video is like seven, eight minutes. Can't you just give me an answer? And I was like, I've explained it in this video better than I ever can. I'm not going to type. I'm not going to top it. You know, so me doing it in real time does neither of us a service because I'm not going to explain it as well as I did in this video. Um, and, and I think it's still going to take you seven or eight minutes, only <laughs> right. then you've got to repeat yourself yep. seven minutes worth when you already did it. Yeah, exactly. And and I think I think those predetermined responses to emails, messages, those kind of things is the same thing. You know, you type it out. You, you probably have it, you know, you have it typed out and you have it prepared as well as it po- possibly can be. Um, and I think it's human nature and it's natural to when you've typed something out, let's say 500,000 times. And someone asks you about it, you're a little fatigued about it. You're a little bit like, I'm so tired of typing this out. So you might leave some things out because you just, you know, you know what I mean? If you have to keep retyping it and that kind of thing. So I think, I think that's a great point. Very, very exactly. valuable. So I have a I have a hint for you for your video when someone says, Can't you just tell me? I don't want to watch the eight minute video. <laughs> uh, why don't you transcribe it? That's a good point. That's a great point. You know, it, and here's here's the video and here's the transcription below the video because some people don't want to watch videos. They want to read it because of fast readers, right? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, you've yeah, got that, transcription that's a, that's a capabilities. Point. That's right? a great, that's a great point. That is a, that is definitely something we should be doing. I think that's exactly. a good idea. Exactly. I love transcriptions. I, I use a program called Designer. And I use it to create, uh, I use it to transcribe things. Like, let's say you created a video, Christian, and it, I can see it's 20 minutes. So I'm like, oh, I really don't have 20 minutes. I'll take the YouTube link and I'll put it in Designer and let it create it. I just read it. <laughs> but I have to come back to it. So I let yeah. Designer just do its thing and then, you know. 20 minutes later, I come back and I read it. So, so yeah. Yeah. yeah if you've got then, agents that don't want to watch it, give them the transcription. And then like if, in that scenario, let's say it is a 20 minute video 
probably going to be a pretty long thing to read. Throw it in chat GPT. Have it summarized. Hey, I didn't <laughs> even think of that. See, you know? these are systems. <laughs> These are system, but sometimes chat GDP is going to miss some of the value bombs, I sure. think. Yeah, I, you know? I would agree. I would agree. I think anytime anything gets summarized, there's something it has to cut out, right? But exactly. I think it depends on, it probably will work for certain videos and not others. You know right. what I mean? It depends on probably, it's probably a, situ a case by case situation. But I think, I think the point being though, you know, there are things you can do to save your time. And I think what where my mind goes in this this topic of conversation is most agents don't realize what an hour of their time is worth and and i think agents that realize how much their time is worth prioritize finding ways to save time and not waste time on things that they that can be avoided and only spending time on things that their time is the best used for exactly so i i i i think I think it's just, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely necessary to take the next step. Yes, absolutely. And I'm so glad that we're talking about this because to me, building systems is the number one best thing that you can do for your business. If you can turn your business into something that could be easily franchised or where you could sell it and the business would go on without you. I mean, of course your clients would miss you. But this is one of the reasons why I had an assistant at the very beginning, because I said, you know, if I ever want to sell my business, I don't want, and, and of course, people know my name, they they know who I am, they want to talk to me. But guess what? Now that I'm using Ring, Ring Central, I see all of the messages that are coming in. I, uh, I don't know what system you use, but I like Ring Central. I can, it, I can see all the messages that come into me and I can see all the messages that come into my assistant and they're transcribed. And so many of my clients just call my assistant and they ask her for things that they would have asked me for if we hadn't trained them that she can take care of things. And then if she doesn't know the answer, she'll, she'll go to me. And my my clients know that I'm their agent, but they also know that Angie's there for them to take care of her of their needs. And so I love I love reading some I love reading the the voicemails. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a fast reader. So you know when I said 20 minutes, it's faster for me to read something like that than it is for me to to sit in it. But um but yeah, I bet you have a bunch of systems that I don't have because of the type of business that you have. What type of systems do you have in your office? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll kind of go into some that I think might be interesting for the audience. I we could we could be on for an hour, right, talking about them all. But I mean, you brought up Ring Central. You our phone system is ran on Ring Central too. So, you know, we have a pretty sophisticated build out for it. One of my employees in my office is she she probably could have been a programmer. She's so smart. She's so intelligent. She set up our entire phone system. And so we have it set up in a way now. I did this part. She didn't know how to do this part. I did this part where, you know, everybody knows Ring Central can record your phone calls automatically. They can record them inbound. They can record them outbound. I have it set up where if a lead is in, a, is in the CRM or if a client file is in the CRM, and it matches the phone number they have, it automatically records and stores under their profile. Isn't and that fabulous? It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's great. It's great. And so, you know, I, I set up the call recording part of it, but she set up everything else in terms of it. And, you know, and, and, and there's so many things you can do with Ring Central. A lot of people use it and they use like the bare minimum, I think, of its capabilities. And it can do anything. Like it can do so many things. Like, you know, we have a Monday morning meeting every single week, you know, that I, I, that we do with our team and our, our employees and everything. And, you know, we have a pre-recorded message that changes automatically at the time of our meeting every Monday that says, if someone calls the office, it says we're in a meeting, we'll be back in 30 minutes, leave a message. We'll call you back. Cool. We have holiday greetings. You know, it says our office is closed for Christmas and then it automatically switches back to the normal greeting out after a certain amount of time. So like, there's a ton that's built in to Ring Central in in our office. I I kind of I kind of went on a tirade in the Facebook group about phone numbers, cell phone numbers, everything like that. 
I couldn't believe the pushback I got on that. I know. Um, you know, there were there were people going like, well, if you have Ring Central, it's just an app on your phone. It's no different if they're calling you. I'm like, no, yes, it is. It's totally different. Like, I, it's not <laughs> even like that to me tells me there's just a bare minimum understanding of what that system can be. And so, yeah, Ring Central is a huge one for us. You know, we we use we use a go high level build out, you know, for automations of leads, automations of clients. It hosts websites for us. It, it hosts Six Figure Medicare University. There's so much we do through that system. We use Monday. Now I have a question. I have yeah. a question. Sure. So I, I'm considering making a change to my CRM. And remember at the beginning, I said a CRM is the main beginner. So my CRM is can it, it's designed for financial advisors and I want to switch over. Do you know the difference between done for you're using done for you or yeah? So what's the yeah. difference between done for you and go guru? Are they on the same platform? They they are. They're both white labeled go high level system. Okay. I, I I'm gonna choose my words a little carefully so Eric doesn't strangle me in my this. sleep. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't we don't have to do that. But I mean really, you know, they're both white labeled systems for okay. you know of go high level. They're the same system. The main differences are going to be templates that are built out inside of it. Okay. You know, and and you know there might be an integration that's been put in, you know, manually by one of the developers, you know, like Eric's team might have put in a different integration with something else. You know, like Eric's team has an integration with OpenAI to where you can build a chat bot out through it and oh. have it talk to people for you and you can train it on responses and things like that. I and GoGuru might have that too. I don't know, but I know that wouldn't have happened unless Eric had built it out. You know, so they um, they they are pretty heavy competitors is what you're saying. Yes, I would I think okay. that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um, both great systems. I I don't have anything bad to say about either one, but I I do use I do use DFY. Our CRMs we do use. It's it's kind of a complicated web of systems because we use two CRMs. Our business is not. I when I've said that in the past, I've had agents be like, "Do I need two CRMs?" No, you you don't. The only reason we have two and we have so many different systems is because our business is really, really complicated. There's a lot of different things that are done in our in 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 my company. You know, so we use agency block and we use DFY. The reason we use agency block is because agency block has a capability of keeping track in a very, very neat way of agents. Your downline. Yeah. yeah con your downline. Con contracts you know, license numbers, you know, it, it's, it's, it's perfect for that. And then in addition to that agency block has the commission tracker, which is a really, right. really, really good tool. And so like our business has a lot of tentacles, you know, and so we've found it necessary, I, I guess. And, you know, we're always looking for ways to improve, but we found it necessary to have two systems. Um, we use Monday. We pay a little bit for Monday. Monday is like a, we basically keep all of, you know, our conference tasks in Monday. It's a very neat way to organize them. And, you know, we can put notes into it. And my team really likes Monday. We could probably do some of that in agency block. I just don't like it as much. It's just not as clean. It's not as easy and for that type of task. I mean, we talked about the scheduling. We talked about that kind of thing. And we, we have so many systems internally, but I think those kind of things, you know, the automation of it all and you know, the organization of it all is really, really good. And and it's not to say that we couldn't do better. We're always, we, there's always areas we can improve, but I mean, we probably spend, I don't know the number off the top of my head. We probably spend 1500 a month on systems and softwares and things right. like that, you know, because as you grow, there's more needs that you have for your business that are going to be solved through systems. <laughs> <laughs>